Hey, it's Niall here. We're back with another video. We're going to be taking a look at the Mark III navigation computer. This is uh, on my 2001 BMW 740 IL. I believe the Mark III came out in like 99 maybe. Um, it's available on the E38, the E39 5 series, and it should be available on the E46 3 series, more specifically like the M3 would have had navigation. And then by 2002, and I think really just for the 2003 model years, so for the last year of production for the E39 and uh, the E46 from 2003, as well as the X5, um, the E53, that was uh, upgraded to the DVD Mark IV navigation system. This is a Mark III, we're gonna go over it, pretty similar to the, to the newer one except the newer one's quicker. So we're gonna just take a look at some of the features and the menu options for it. So we're gonna start off with the onboard computer. This shows you really basic information about your fuel consumption, speed. Uh, you can set a limit uh, in terms of speed limit um, and then also a timer. So consumption is your fuel consumption. You can reset it by clicking the button. Same thing with consumption two. Average speed, again, you can recalculate, it'll just reset it. A speed limit, if you wanted to, you can set the speed to, I don't know, let's set it to 114. So then, again, you could set the speed, you could reset it. So I, uh, I haven't personally used it, but it will chime if you're going over the speed limit. Distance is, essentially a countdown. So if you, I, like, I don't really know who would have ever used that. Maybe things were different back in 99 and <laughs> before navigation really became what it is today. Uh, but I think it was more if you knew that you were a hundred kilometers from your destination or maybe if you're using it to, you know, I need to do something in a hundred kilometers, whatever it'll do, it counts down the, the distance that you've traveled. Uh, and again, that can be reset. Um, I don't like to use it because if you set it to 100 and then you keep driving past 100, then it'll go into the negatives and I don't really know the process to reset it. And uh, the timer's pretty self-explanatory. You know, you can push the start button and it'll count. So if you are, again, maybe I wouldn't necessarily use it for a lap time because it's only in seconds and not tenths or hundredths. But if you are trying to figure out maybe how long it takes you to get from point A to point B, you can set up a timer and it would be displayed on your MID screen in your uh, instrument cluster. Um, and then obviously you can pause or stop. So that's pretty much that. There really aren't a lot of features when it comes to the board computer. If you're really not interested in having the navigation function running all the time, then this is probably your best option. It shows you your, uh, your range, distance to empty your outside temperature, and then again, the arrival time if you're using uh, GPS or I believe the distance as well works that way. So click the menu button, go down to DSP, Digital Sound Processing System. A lot of people love it. I, uh, I don't mind it. I need to replace the speakers on my car, but uh, this essentially sets up your speakers and your sound system. I don't know really the good way to set it up, but you can change things such as the room and the echo. You can put it in demo mode, which will cycle through the, the presets for you, uh, or you can turn it on and off. I'm not gonna play with that though. Auxiliary ventilation. Now this is if you were to wanna wake up in the morning, your car's parked outside, you wanna start it up and run the vents. It doesn't run the heat though. I think it'll run cooler air. So in something like the, the summertime, you might wanna have that running. So you can set it up on a timer. And the way it works is you set it for whatever time. And when you activate it by pushing a little check mark there, your light will come on here to tell you that the next time the clock hits 11.05 a.m., the fan will turn on. And I believe it's a 15 minute fan that will run and then it turns off. And if you wanna run it the next day, you have to go back into the setting and click the button again. Now I'm gonna turn it off because I don't need it for 11 a.m. tomorrow. Now the auxiliary vent, this is essentially right now. You can hear and, uh, and maybe even see too, uh, at the bottom of your screen there, my fan has turned on. So you can turn that off. That's good if you, you know, if you take your keys out of the car 
maybe you have you know your family staying in the car you're running in to go grab something then rather than leaving the engine running or the key in the ignition you can turn on the fan it'll blow in fresh air from the outside um, to keep the ventilation going and that stays on until you turn on the car as far as i know it might be a 15 minute timer though settings are all the settings related to the um to the car itself so you can do go you can change from a split screen to a full screen and really that only makes a difference when you're in something like the board computer it shows you on the the right side there your physical location with your longitude and latitude coordinates super useful i love it it'd be a little nicer maybe if you could set it up so it would display what you're actually like if you go into into navigation right and you go into the map you're still pretty much seeing these coordinates there it's really not very functional so i usually keep it off it's pretty dumb so i'll put that back to full so your clock i you know really self-explanatory 24 hour 12 hour you can set it same with the date uh date or month or month or date um i think it should be more like that but then it switches it to 24 hour clock and then you switch it back to 12 hours and it goes back to that you can't really win navigation volume i keep it on low color set uh, i've got two options here one's blue kind of i guess it's okay the other one is a darker color kind of matches the color scheme of the car the rest of the the information there language i think this is a european computer that i've got because it's uh, d and gb which would be deutsch and great britain so my navigation computer is uh, got a british accent to it which is pretty cool and uh, i don't speak the dutch so i don't do that so distance, um, this is only for your board computer display for your range. Uh, unfortunately, with this particular car, it only shows on the, the speedometer the distance, the speed that you're going in kilometers per hour. So you can set how many miles you have left until you're empty, but you can't set the, the current speed to see what you're doing. So it's not very convenient if you were to drive down to the States. So if you wanna know what your distance is in kilometers or miles, that's what that does. Um, same thing with consumption. You can change it from liters per hundred kilometers, which is the standard that I use at least, which should be what we use up here in Canada, miles per gallon or kilometers per liter. And then temperature, again, does not change the, uh, the temperature. Oops, for everything. Actually it does, that's cool. So I learned something new. I've got now Fahrenheit instead of uh, Celsius for both the cluster as well as the heating and control elements at the bottom there. So we'll turn it back to Celsius where, where it's uh, standard here. And then Memo, I, uh, I think it chimes, that's supposed to chime every hour. Just lets you know that uh, it's, you know, five o'clock and it just bing, just to let you know. So that's uh, all the settings there that you've got. Monitor off, turns off the screen, and then you can push the button again to come back up. Code is if you wanna put in a anti-theft code. I don't use it, I know some people do, and then I've heard of a lot of people where they've put the code in and they forget it, or it was set by somebody who, you know, you don't wanna have it. So essentially you would, you know, set a, a four digit code there to get into the car so when you start up the car before you turn on the ignition the computer comes on asks you for the code you punch in it then you can start the car i don't know if it really is effective as an anti-theft deterrent i've not used it and uh, i can't imagine that it's very effective uh in the long run when it comes to people if you really if they really want to steal your car they're gonna steal it now i can't really show you the telephone options because i have removed my telephone I had the G, uh, the GSM version of the Motorola StarTac phone, uh, flip phone. It was in really rough condition when I got the car. It didn't really fit into the holder. The antenna was broken, so I took it out. Um, but if the phone was connected, I could show you some of the options there. And even if it was connected, it wasn't connected to the network, so I couldn't do anything with it. Uh, GPS navigation is what I use uh, essentially out of the, the screen the most. Um, it's out of date. These maps are for 2002, I believe. And my understanding is you can still get the CD for 2015. The last update, 2015.2, uh, is the last one that you can buy from BMW. After that, they're no longer doing uh, the maps for Mark III or IV, as far as I, I know. So if you really want to get the most recent maps, 2015 will be it. 
they're pretty expensive from the dealer if they can even get them for you. For me, it's, you know, it's good enough, just the way it is. Maybe I'll, I'll upgrade it down the road, but you can go in and, and find out where you want to go, put in the country, put in the city, street. The route preference is things like you want to avoid highways or um, or fastest route, avoid tolls, things like that. Uh, obviously, if your map is out of date, it's not going to do that that well. Uh, you can go into the last destination. So we've got you know some uh, different places that I've taken the GPS there. So that works like that. Address book, it's empty because I don't have <laughs> I don't have the phone connected, so it doesn't do anything. Uh, information is kind of like what's around. So there's no destination that I've set. So we can go back to information and information on location. So for example, this will find very slowly and very out of date considering it's 15 years old, uh, things in the area of where we are. So for example, if I needed a BMW service center, I can click that and it should take me to performance BMW in St. Catharines in about 40 years. There we go. So 17 kilometers away, get to performance BMW. Uh, Bud's BMW is the next one. This is older, so it doesn't have their Hamilton location. And then BMW of Mississauga is now FAF. So that, you know, out of date, but good enough. Uh, gas stations, we are in the town of Lincoln right now. So Brian Stout Garage, uh, that might still exist, but certainly not a gas station anymore. Pioneer exists, Pioneer exists, Ed's Auto Service, Petro Canada, Esso. So, I mean, you know, again, it's out of date and it's to be expected for a 15 year old uh, GPS. So you can see some basic stuff there. Automobile Club, I, I guess it's like CAA maybe. Um, really, I haven't played with these. This is the first time that I'm taking a look at most of these features in the navigation as well. So there you go, CAA. So if you have it, you need a, a battery boost or something. Um, and then you've got public places, things like that. So we can take a quick look. Again, probably not gonna be accurate, but let's see if there's a city hall around. Lincoln Town Hall, Grimsby Town Hall, what do you know? All of those are there, that's awesome. What about schools? What would you actually use this for? Shopping center. Ah, Camisos, yeah, that's a shopping center. Avondale, Bartlett Convenience, Cherry Lane. It's kind of like, it's like a, a trip down memory lane with this navigation system because it's so out of date, you can see what, the, what life was like in 2002. Um, that's about it. So we're going to, like I just clicked the police that, uh, again, looks pretty accurate. So we're going to go back. Um, you know, you can do places to visit, stuff like that. So, it, you know, it's, it's slow. You can see that it's not very responsive. That is, uh, just the limitation of the computer software itself. If you were to upgrade to the Mark IV computer, which they tend to sell, they're probably a little bit more now, but they're around the 400 us dollar price point. It is plug and play. You would pop open the trunk, slap in uh, some little ejector tools, pull out the old one, put the new one in, connect it up, and then uh, I believe you turn the ignition to position two and it'll initialize and then you turn off the car and then you would go back to position two and it should start up. And that's the same way too if you were to go from the four by three screen to the widescreen navigation as well, it just resets it. You don't need a new computer for it. So it's information, uh, and again, we're not gonna do any navigation here, but it would work. When you do set a, uh, a, a thing here, we'll just do that. By default, the navigation shows you the distance to your next turn and sort of the direction that it is, and then the direction that your location is in general, sort of where you are. Um, it could, gives you the total distance at the top as well as the time of arrival. I don't like to see this, it's very useless. So I'll click the button, go into the route map, and it shows you on the screen exactly the, the route that you would take in the white line. And then again, just at the, the top here, it still shows you the total distance and when you need to turn left, uh, next. I like it, it would pop up and tell you, turn left in 400 meters, or enter the expressway in 500 meters. And it's you know very loud and annoying, but it works. It's, you know, if this was your brand new car in 2002, 2001, you know, it was pretty amazing to have GPS. So, you know, it's outdated by today's standards. Every Kia and, and like Chevy Cruze has navigation now, but you know, you can upgrade it. And my 
my understanding of the Mark IV system is it makes it more modern. Uh, it's still not as new as the iDrive system, but I believe that the iDrive in the E65 and E60 7 and 5 series respective used a very similar map to what is on the Mark IV navigation. So anyway, um, but that's that. And you can go in, there's a little menu here so you can have instructions. Please proceed to the hand route. There you go. Uh, map positioning would be allow you to either have it point north, which I always do, or in the travel direction. So if you do that, it's again, it's a slower computer. I don't like to do it because when you make the turn, it takes a few seconds for it to, to readjust where you are on the screen and it has to you know recreate that map every time. So it's very slow, it might be quicker on the newer one. Um, so I usually, and by usually I mean all the time, I always leave it on pointing north. It's just easier for me. Um, the scale, now you can change it from there and you can go up to 100 kilometers, which is really unnecessary. And you'll see that it's uh, a good indication of where you are in Southern Ontario for this example. Um, and then you can go down to 100 meters and get a little bit closer. I like to keep it around 200. You don't have to click the button though to do it. You can just, turn it and it'll do that by default. So you've got that there. Um, and then we're gonna go back to the destination input map. This will allow you, if you really, really needed to, it'll point you to where you're going. And then you can kind of scroll over incredibly slowly if you wanted to see what's around there. I don't recommend it, it's very, very slow and useless. So you click the arrow button to go back. We've got that again terminate guidance to get rid of that and then we're back to to this so I keep it on the map so that uh, I just see what I'm doing and where I'm going at all times and I believe there should be a way if we go back here there might be a way to clear it because now I've got this map here and I don't want it Anyway, so that'll stay there, I think, until the, the next time I set up a destination, which is fine. That's essentially the GPS. There's really not a whole lot else. Um, if you were to push this button here that looks like the tape that switches it over to what's playing on the radio, right? Now, it shows you the name of the song, usually the, uh, the artist, the name, and then if it's not playing that, it'll tell you what the radio station is. You've got your time, your date. Uh, RDS has something to do with the radio um, information being sent to the car. You can change that. P4 is the program. You know, if you change it to the different favorites that you've got, it's there. You've got FM1, FM2, FM automatic. So if you were to put it into FM automatic and then hold down the FM button, it does auto store and it'll cycle through and find the, the six strongest radio stations in the area and program them one, two, three, four, five, six. That's very helpful if you're driving uh, a long distance and you get out of the range of your typical radio stations that you listen to. It takes about a minute for it to go through once that auto store changes back to, it's gonna be like 91.2 or something. Um, then you know it's done and it's set up with six stations that are good. So there you go, 97. So click back to FM, uh, it takes me back to FM1, back to my, my presets there. Uh, you can click info, uh, RDS again is what I have it set up to so that it's, oops, turn it on or off, TP, I truly I, I wish I knew, I don't remember what it really does. So the mode changes it to tape, if you were to push the little eject button there, whee, your screen goes down, now I don't know if mine will go up on its own but uh, it hasn't in the past. You've got your CD and then back to your radio there. Um, and eventually it might go up. We'll just, we'll just give it a little nudge. There we go. Uh, AM, self-explanatory. There's only one AM station that you've got for that. Uh, and then really the only other options you've got left select is uh, automatic search. So again, back to that auto store kind of thing, you can do it uh, on FM one or two, uh, station sample, it'll just kind of scan through and give you an idea of what stations are available. And then uh, manually tune station is, you know, you click that and you would go in and find 
with the dial there which station you want to listen to. Tone, change your bass, your treble, your fade, your balance. That's basically it. This button does nothing. This button does nothing. This button does nothing. Well, it would do something if I had a phone connected. And yeah, I usually leave it on the navigation there. Info does, uh, again, nothing for navigation, only for your radio. And truthfully, it works pretty well. I mean, it's a very simple system. Um, it doesn't take a lot to get used to. The only problem that I have, as you saw with this video, is figuring out, do I scroll counterclockwise or clockwise based on it? It's not, I don't know why, but it, it, it's not like a scroll up and down feature. It actually is scrolling in a clockwise or counterclockwise fashion. So when you're on the menu screen, you know, you're going in a clockwise or counterclockwise fashion. Um, but when you're in a, a system that doesn't have that, then, you know, do you, do you rotate that way or do you rotate that way? So anyway, it's, you know, it gets the job done. I have no problems with it. It's a good system for what it is for being 15 years old and it works. And if you want to, you know, like I said, if you want to upgrade it by all means, you want to spend the money. It, it's it, to me, it's a worthwhile investment. I just haven't found one for sale, um, but it works well. And, and I hope this video helps. If you had any questions about uh, the specifics of your Mark three navigation system on your, your, you know, X five, your five series, your, th your three series or your seven, uh, hopefully that'll help. If you have specific questions that you'd like answered, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about the video and, and if there's something you'd like us to highlight uh, either in this video or in a subsequent video. If we've missed something that you felt was important on this one, let us know. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe too. We're uh, hoping to pump out some more content related to this particular car. It's the only one I've got access to. But uh, if you've liked the videos and there's something you want to see, let us know. So until next time, thanks for watching.